In Cat's Cradle, a novel by Kurt Vonnegut, there's a mad scientist, a character, who creates a polymorph of ice called Ice-9. Now, this is one of nine different forms of ice that are all arranged differently on a molecular level. All the different hydrogen atoms and oxygen atoms are interacting with each other in different ways, creating different forms of ice. In this case, Ice-9 is this fictitious creation, a fictitious um, thought that water could make a different form of itself and actually, in the case of the book, Cat's Cradle, be stable as a solid at room temperature. Now, this um, fictitious Ice-9 does a lot of other things that are very important to the plot of the book that I don't want to get too deep into, but what I do want to talk about today, rock stars, is that there are such things as polymorphs of ice. That's right. Ice-9 is a real thing and really exists, and scientists have created it. Let's talk about it on this episode of Rock Talk. As we talked about in our last video, Rockstars, where we smashed that block of ice, water is pretty cool. It's a pretty unique substance on Earth. The only substance that can be a solid, a liquid, and a gas at the surface. There's nothing else that can do that, which makes it pretty special already. Ice gets even more interesting when we realize that scientists have discovered or theorized at least 17 different types of ice, which is wild. What does that even mean really though? How can you have more than one molecular form of ice. And to really dig into that, we really need to better understand a little bit more about why we can even have a solid, a liquid, and a gaseous form of water on Earth in the first place. And it all has to do with two letters, pressure and temperature. Yes, these two factors affect how everything on Earth solidifies and liquefies. Everything from your ice cream to molten lava is all based off of the pressure and the temperature. You change the pressure, you change the effective temperature that something will melt at. Now, this is the same exact thing for ice. You change around the pressure and the temperature, and just like that, lower pressure, and suddenly your ice starts to melt at lower temperatures. Or with a high enough pressure, you might not even melt that ice at all, which is crazy. But what scientists have discovered is that by applying these principles in very, very specific ways in the laboratory, you can actually form different patterns for interlocking water's molecules together. And this is a very unique thing that has to do with water's polarity. That's right, because water is a polar molecule, H2O. But there's something else in that molecule that's kind of shaking things up a little bit, and it's the electrons. Those electrons are essential in making water a polar molecule. Now, very simply, when water freezes, that polar molecule, that tetrahedron of water, that single molecule, will form up with the other tetrahedron. And based off of those charges, link up and form that we will commonly see on the surface, that's known as ice one. Our ice, the ice that we're most com most comfortable with, the kind that you see in your fridge, the kind that falls in snow, it's all ice one. Because it all forms at roughly the same pressure and similar temperatures. Now, by messing with the variables there and really messing around with things, scientists have been able to create at least 17 different kinds of ice in of, mind you, very, very strictly controlled laboratory environments. However, some of these forms of ice are even stable enough to be brought off of a high pressure environment, releasing the pressure, and still maintain a different crystal lattice. Which is extremely interesting, because water usually has what's called a hexagonal um, crystal lattice pattern, uh, or a crystal system that it falls under, which is going to be the hexagonal system. You can find out all about the crystal systems, which I covered extensively in a previous episode, which I will link 
down below. Now, what's interesting about these different phases of ice is that uh, cycling through these different phases, ice will form almost every single crystal system. Ice will form a hexagonal system. It will form a cubic system. It can form all different kinds of crystal systems based off of how you apply a certain amount of pressure and temperature when forming that ice. It's so fascinating that ice is one of the only substances that can form almost every single kind of the crystal lattice systems. That blows my mind. I think that's so cool. <clears throat> Now, I haven't even talked about the most common kind of ice in the universe, and that's not the kind that's most common on Earth. Ice one is not what you're going to find out in space. The kind of ice that you're going to find out in space is called amorphous ice, an ice that is very much like glass. It's an amorphous solid, meaning that the molecules don't have an ordered arrangement to them. They're kind of haphazardly all jam jumbled about because very much like obsidian, amorphous ice out in space has cooled very rapidly, very, very quickly, because, well, space is really, really cold. So as you can imagine, any kind of water out there is going to be almost instantaneously frozen so quickly that the molecules, those polar hydrogen-oxygen molecules, don't have time to link up and form those complex hexagonal symmetries that you see here on Earth. So instead, it's going to be an amorphous solid, an amorphous blob out there floating in space, which is the most common kind of ice, if you're not hanging out on our very awesome planet. Now, don't fret, rock stars. We're not going to see any madmen running around with Ice 10 or Ice 13 trying to take over the world anytime soon. <laughs> or, or really not at all. Uh, because none of these ice forms that I've talked about are really stable outside of a laboratory. You're not going to see that kind of thing happen. Absolutely fascinating stuff out there. Sometimes I find that the truth is a little weirder than the fiction. So there you have it, rock stars, all of the different myriad forms of ice and how it really makes you appreciate not only how unique water and ice are, but how special our planet is, that we have one of the only spots in the entire solar system, let alone the universe, where you can have solid, liquid, and gaseous ice water on the surface. That's pretty rare. That's pretty special. And it really, really makes me happy to just be alive. So, hey, rock stars, thanks for joining me on this one. And if you haven't already, please subscribe down below to the channel. And if you've subscribed but haven't hit the bell, please do, because that will let you know the next time I post an awesome video like this one. Thanks again for joining, rock stars. Stay curious and keep on rocking. Catch you next time.